Have you ever wanted a separate sewing space, like away from your kids, away from your spouse, away from everything, just the perfect little space, a mom cave, a dad den, whatever it is, just away from everything. It would just be absolutely perfect. Well, my dream actually came true. Let me show you how. Welcome to my ultimate sewing space. Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. Blueprint DIY or is it Blueprint Signature? Well, Blueprint Signature is the name of my fashion line, my brand, and it's the overall name of my business. Of course, for 10 years, I have been putting out amazing DIY upcycle tutorials on YouTube and all the socials in order to share with you guys how to make your own upcycle designer fashion. Now it is time, it is finally time this year, 2023, to put my designs out there to create a sustainable upcycle fashion brand. And this is the space I share with you guys when I first got the space, what it looked like, what condition it was in, and why I really loved it. After that, we did, of course, have to get air conditioning and heating. I live in Houston, Texas. And actually, last week while I was in here building everything and putting everything together, over the course of that week, I went from using the heat because it was cold outside to the end of the week using the air and in between using nothing from one extreme to the other. And so I'm so grateful that I was able to do that. Then next, I wanted to go ahead and get the floor sealed because when we're doing garments and something falls on the floor, I don't want it to automatically be dusty from the concrete. So with this concrete sealer, I can sweep, I can mop and I can keep it nice and clean. So why is this the ultimate sewing space? Because it has everything. So let's go back to the beginning and show you my office. As you walk in, you can see my hello sign. Even though this space is not necessarily for the public, I definitely did want to have something there to wipe your feet, to keep everything clean. And another chair that I had in my sewing room as well. And here, all I wanted really was a place to work on my computer, maybe edit. Um, really, the biggest thing I wanted to be able to do is to be able to post inspiration. So right here, I made my own bulletin board with some insulation board, that pink insulation board. And then I bought gold hardware in order to nail it to the wall. It was super, super easy. I was intimidated at first, but it really, really was easy. All I did was take my staple gun, wrap the fabric around the uh, insulation board as tight as I possibly could, and then just stapled it. This particular fabric is like an indoor outdoor fabric. A lot of people use burlap, but I wanted something that was really monochromatic to the wall. And so that's what I chose. Um, I have my office chair from the house as well as another chair from the house. Um, I did elevate this chair so that it matched the height of this desk. I added a new cylinder to the base. So that is super cool. Right now when I sit in it, like my feet are dangling <laughs> and it even goes higher that's not even the highest it goes that's just the height that's really good for the um, desk this desk actually does move I wanted this particular desk all this is is a desk that you would normally use for like uh, next to your bed or over your bed and I just got this in order to be able to move it to this wall over here when I don't want it here I will be doing some recording different things like that right here so I wanted the backdrop the blueprint signature in the background and that I did just printed it it's permanent vinyl on my Cricut I printed it and put it up there that was a pretty easy project like I said I was intimidated at first it just took some time and actually for me free because I had everything I needed in order to do it so yeah that's one less thing that I had to pay for and then I added a rug underneath I kind of wanted to carve myself out of space right here in the corner and so I cut off the edges of the circle but when people are walking past I did not want want them to step on the rug. I wanted to make sure that it's just underneath the desk. It's solely for the purposes of working at the desk and that's it. And then I bought some super cute little pins, clothes pins, as well as just push pins for the bulletin board there. Through this door is the warehouse space. And the first thing you see here is my kind of conference area. And the first thing I actually bought for the space was these chairs. I absolutely love them. I got this from a local store here in Houston. I will put the link in the description box below, but I like them because they're easy to lift. They're easy to move around so that if I want to use it in a different part of the space, they don't get banged up 
when I'm trying to use them in other places. And then these are just two really, really cheap tables from Ikea. Um, eventually we'll get some grand conference table, but I figure at this point, really it's for me to eat lunch, for everybody to eat lunch, as well as to meet here. And so I didn't wanna put in a whole lot of money into that. Right here, I decided to get a marker board in order to talk about what's coming up that day, what we'll be doing that week here. Of course, I did use the Cricut again to add the signage here. And we can put the calendar here, we can do whatever. Once again, this did come from Ikea. And then on the other side, this is also a bulletin board as well. I am so glad that I actually did make my own for in the front because this one is actually really, really hard to stick into, but it's still usable. And right here, we can add patterns that may be something that is going to be up and coming for that particular week, whatever they're gonna be sewing. And then I'll show you in a minute, I'll also be able to block off this space if I'm having a private meeting and wanna kinda of dull the noise or just kind of be more intimate, have a more intimate setting as well. And then kind of hot hidden is a hook. That hook is for when I want to photograph the before pictures of the items that I'm going to be upcycling and remaking. All right, right off the bat, you can see I do have two sewing tables. I don't know eventually what type of sewing machines will end up here, but currently I have the Singer 6800C, which was sent to me by Singer. I hadn't got a chance to review it, so I thought this was the perfect machine to bring over here. I'm hoping it performs similar to my Burnett B77, which I have at home. And then, of course, for this space, you need a serger and so I bought another one of my tried and true Brother 1034D. Eventually I will get an industrial serger but until then I know that this handles the most for the least cost and it's easier to thread than most sergers in my opinion. Each station does have a set of drawers as well as a trash can and this amazing chair. I really, really like the way this chair sits. Um, you can see that the space does have an overall kind of industrial feel as you look around. Um, I really like that, that's my vibe. And I like for everything else to kind of be muted and then the color of the threads, the garments to be the color in the space i'm the color in the space so um above here i'm super excited to have pegboards all along each wall to hold whatever to hold the thread to hold the scissors to hold tools whatever each station needs and directly behind one of those sewing stations is the ironing station i instead of getting the ironing table i just got an ironing board for right now i purchased another t-fall iron which is the same one i have in my sewing room at home i really like that as an inning expensive um, option and then of course my ladies I have one on each side this is Jaleesa and the shorter one is Whitley let me know if you catch the reference and then behind me you'll see this station is the Cricut station this is where I have my heat press as well as all my Cricut supplies that is definitely going to come in handy because you guys know I love to add branding I love to add different things I also have uh, my frame so that I can do silk screening as as well in this area. Behind me here, you can see I have just another rack. This is the initial rack that I owned. And right there, I bought some pattern hooks so that eventually once I have patterns, I can hang the patterns back there or wherever I wanna hang them. The rack does move all over, but for right now, that's its home. For the sewing station on this side, I decided to bring over the Singer 4452 and the Janome, the 1522 DG from the house, as well as the thread that was gifted to me by Waywalk. Um, so glad to have that. And I thought that it would be really, really good to have over here versus at home. I figured it would get more use here. You guys, if you have Joanne Fabrics, if you live in the US, these scissors are on sale. So check the description box. They are 12 inch, like these are big puppies. Um, tailoring scissors. So I got two pairs for uh, cutting and different things over here, as well as just some basic scissors. You gotta have 50 million pairs of scissors in the ultimate sewing space. And then you can see my baby is here. Yes, I figured that he would get more use here than at home where I just really like to look at him and whenever I'm doing something heavy duty, which I wish he was at home the other day when I was doing a project, my project for next week, but um, he is here now. I know he's gonna get so much more use and 
just do the things that we need to do here because you guys know I like sewing through layers. That is his gift, his specialty. This is the Sailrite uh, Fabricator, just so you know. Yeah, this is my favorite sewing machine of all time. For one thing, it's gorgeous, and two, it will sew through anything. But above it are the gigantic bobbins that it takes. So yeah, super excited to have this here. And next, of course, we need a station for packing and shipping. You can see it's pretty empty right here because we don't have anything to pack or to ship um, just yet, but we can keep orders here. I have some tools right here. And of course, this is Whitley. She's on this side for this sewing station. Everything, you, you guys know how it is. Once we start, rocking and rolling everything is going to be everywhere but for now this is the setup um each station does have its own little trash can these bookcases i am so excited that they made it here i had planned on buying just some more adjustable legs like i have over here for this station and it wasn't going to have any storage except i was just going to buy storage like rolling storage underneath but these bookcases were in my garage. I remembered as I was moving everything over that they were there. And I'm so grateful that I remember because these bookcases are actually from when I planned my husband's, my late husband's office um, as a surprise for him. He loved it. The only time I've ever seen him cry. So I'm just so grateful that a piece of him made the trip. And so now they're going to be used to hold a bunch of stuff. On the end here, I just have a wooden uh, shelf system from Ikea that I'm going to use to store my labels and stuff like that. The things that need to go on the garments as well as the things that need to go on the packaging so yeah we're getting branding and everything like that ordered right now so we're moving like lightning but when i set out to do something <laughs> i'm gonna do it so yeah we're moving and here is the elephant in the room. This is 63 by 63 inches of cutting space. This is, of course, the biggest sewing cutting table that I have ever owned and that I've ever seen in person. And all it is is two IKEA tables put together in on end with some metal pieces underneath as well as a leg in the middle to hold them up. They are balanced on top of the IKEA Calyx system and and um, as well as some iron pipes that I ordered on Amazon. I will put the link for absolutely everything in the description box below. I'm so happy to have this. I am gonna get two more of the small calyx system, the four by four, to put in the inside. If you've seen any of my sewing room tours, you know that I have one of these in my house. It holds so much, so I figured, if I was going to have a cutting table, then I was gonna get as much storage in it as possible. And so it's gonna have four sides of storage in the end, as well as I'm going to put a board in the middle that I will be able to store flat things like this. This is a cutting board, flat things like this, completely underneath. Currently, I do have some things underneath on the shelf that aren't super big, but it's just so nice to be able to store things like, you know, to get it off the table, to keep the table clear and go ahead, and put my scissors down there, go ahead and put the pins down there, whatever down there until we put it back away. And then um, just have that space for things that are flat that need to be stored. In the front, I have some baskets down below. Those are new to this space. And then my wood baskets from the house. You guys have seen those for many, many years. Those are some that I got from Ikea that they no longer sell. And then I bought some of the drawers that Ikea sells that uh, are specific for this space. And I figure a lot of them are gonna have these drawers and each one, we could put labels on them and each one can have different things in them. And I forgot to say that once we do have products, this whole back wall is gonna be covered with um, like the Ikea pack system, wardrobe system, so that the garments can be enclosed in you know their own little closet, keep them nice, fresh, and everything there. But we don't need to worry about that just yet. All right, so now let's talk about another thing that makes this the ultimate sewing space for me because I have a whole refrigerator to myself. I don't have to share it with the kids. 
Um, and so right now there's just water and, but there are pockies in there and I can keep them in there and nobody can have them or eat them. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that. I decided to just get a mini fridge, something with a freezer, um, uh, because most of the things that I eat for lunch are frozen. You know, don't hate on me for what I eat, but the fact that I eat lunch is a victory for me. So stopping work to eat, um, yeah, that is my challenge. So making sure I had that as well as a microwave and uh, an air fryer. The air fryer is because we got a double at the house and you know, I'm grateful that sometimes I'm a little bit of a hoarder and I just had that and I was, it was, it was on its way out and then I got the space and so I was like, oh, something I can take over there and it could be useful. So I'm super excited to have that. These are rolling carts so that if I have any other reason to have use for them, I can. I really like that most things here, they can be disassembled and reconfigured in so many different ways as we grow, as we learn, um, as we might move, you know, who knows what the future holds. So I wanted to make sure that everything was as uh, convertible and reusable as possible, which is a lot of our model here as well. And the above cabin is almost like lockers. So I really like those on one side. I have, you know, almost like pantry style. The other side is everything that I need for uh, washing and drying. And then here is a cabinet that's holding my AC and heating and that's inconsequential. But above the cabinet, you can see before pictures of the things that we have that have not been converted into something else. And I think what I'm gonna do in the end is put that picture in the package when it goes out to someone so they can see the before of what their garment used to be. I thought that that would just be a nice touch, you know, just to, so people know it truly, truly is circular fashion. It's being remade up cycled into something else. So uh, let me know if you like that idea. All right, and if we pivot just a little bit, over here is the washing station. This is a you know single unit washer dryer. I'm loving it so far. I can't believe that it was a maybe for me. Um, can you imagine me having to take all of the clothes and wash them at home? for my business, that makes no sense. And so I'm so, so grateful that the spaces before this didn't work out because I was able to get this added, put in the um, plug for it, as well as the water connection, as well as these that I can just take to the car. You guys, when you first saw the space, it has a garage door. So I can back my car up and just <laughs> put out all of the things that I have thrifted, throw them into the light, dark bin, and then bring them over here to wash. And then once they're washed, we take them out of the dryer and hang them up and put them on that hook that I told you about before. And then we take a picture and put it up on the before wall and then hang it up here. So this, these three racks, which are movable. And like I said, I'm just all about being able to just move the whole thing, move the whole space if we need to. I don't know enough about what I'm doing to be so set, you know? So I thought that this would be a good thing. The reviews said they hold a ton of clothes, they're industrial strength. So these should be able to go with me for a very, very long time. And once they're full of clothes, I can also take these and surround the conference table so that if I want some privacy away from the people who are working, then I can put those around there and provide a level, a certain level of privacy. And then last in this space, but certainly not least, is this mirror. This mirror is from my house. It's been with me um, for lookbooks and shoots for a very long time. But the reason it is here is more for, it's our runway. Someone suggested that we have a runway, even though we're not really gonna be doing runway shows here, we will be preparing for runway shows here. And so when I have the models here and I'm fitting them, they'll be able to walk the white line and they'll be able to you know, know how the clothes look, whether they're walking right, everything like that. So thank you to whoever suggested that. All right, last but certainly not least is the bathroom. You gotta have a banging bathroom. And this bathroom definitely had potential, but it didn't have enough lighting. And so since the contractors told me that 
there was a lot of wiring and everything going on in this wall because behind there is where my washer and dryer is. Um, I just decided to add some lighting that is plug-in. And so it does have a remote control that I can use. It's plugged in right here and just kind of hit in there. It's obvious, but not so obvious. Um, then of course I had to add something like some type of storage in here because there wasn't anything. And down below there will be a door. It wasn't in stock at the time when I built this. And so there is a door that goes over here. So you don't see everything <laughs> that's stored in the bathroom. But then I also have a drawer for toiletries. And I'm super excited about that because I used it the other day. Um, get sweaty, you can wipe down or whatever. Makeup wipes, wipe your makeup off. Um, there are lady products, um, there's towels, and then there's a first aid kit because it's not a place that I need to be if it don't have a first aid kit because I'm little accident prone. And then I also had to put up the mirrors. So I bought two of the same mirror. This one I mounted horizontally and this one I mounted vertically because you got to have a place to take work bathroom selfies. And then of course behind me I also put in a, another hook so that when you're getting dressed in and out of each outfit that you'll have a place to hang it. I cannot stand when you go to a bathroom and you have no place to hang anything like your purse or whatever. Whatever it is you need to hang. So that is that and I think we're done. The only other space is this area over here and this is basically just the no man's land right now. Eventually I wanted to keep it clear for one thing, if I absolutely need to pull my car in, I can. But then the other thing is that this is a nice big area and can shoot lookbooks and looks in. Um, so I'm gonna take the paper roll that I have from the house that I really never use there because my space at the house is so small. So I'll be able to mount it there and and use it to shoot the garments before we sell them when we're marketing and as well as for videos when I want to shoot my looks I have more space here than I ever could have imagined so I can use you know I can use the roll-up door as the backdrop or I can use the white wall or I can use the color paper backdrop I just need to get the rest of the cardboard out of here I did I wanted to let you guys know I did package every every piece of cardboard that I got from all of the mini packages I received um, in this space and I put them in my car and took them to the recycling center so none of that stuff went to the trash so I'll be taking the rest of this stuff uh, to recycle it because yes we are doing our best to stay sustainable so that is the space I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope it gave you some ideas of maybe some things that you can do in your space of course this is on a grand scale definitely something to dream about maybe if that is your goal in life but Definitely some of the little things, you know, like maybe elevating your cutting table so that you can get flat storage underneath or how I set up my sewing tables with the cabinet on the end with the drawers, as well as having a station for Cricut and packing and shipping and stuff like that. Everything can be done on a smaller scale. Of course, this is what I have been doing in my house for a really long time. You guys know that I started off at the foyer and then I worked my way, took over the dining room. Then I took over the dining room and the formal living room. And now we're here and I'm super excited and I do have a secret that I am keeping and y'all know I cannot keep secrets it is burning a hole in my soul but I can share partially share it in next week's video so you don't want to miss that it's an upcycle video I know I know y'all need an upcycle it's an upcycle video it'll be next week um I will yeah it's burning a hole let's just say you'll be able to see me on that's too much. All right, so definitely let me know if you got any ideas from this. Check the description for all of the links. And if you made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching all the way through. I appreciate that so much. And of course I have Upcycle tutorials up the wazoo for you guys. So definitely click those links and watch those and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.